Hi there, Sandra here from Create in Spain. Glad you could join me today because I have five crafting tips for you. Right, the first one is about this particular card. Now it's a Xerox Coltec production and office colour laser card. It's only 160 GSM, so it's a thin card. However, I was lucky enough to get this pack which is 250 sheets for under seven euros. And that's very, very, very good. Now, the reason I was able to get it this cheaply was because it was an Amazon warehouse deal. Now, I wasn't unduly aware of warehouse deals. It's my husband that found it. And um, he said, well, the warehouse is where they have things where the package might be damaged or whatever, people have returned it, what have you. And then you can sometimes get a good deal. It is, however, worth checking on the normal prices to make sure you are getting a good deal. With this one, I definitely was because I think the general price tag is about 21 euros. I definitely got a good deal. And in fact, the only damage to it was can't see it now. There was a slit in the paper or a tear in the paper covering it just there. All the paper was well and truly inside the wrapper. There was nothing wrong with the paper itself inside. I've slit this off here so I can put it onto my shelf and have easy access. So this particular paper, what's it like? I did some testing just so that I could show you because I was interested in how it would cut on my cutting machine. So I've done some ink testing and some cut testing so that you can see how it has fared. Right, to start off with, the cutting aspect of this is great. It cuts really, really well with the detail blade. The standard blade will cut it fine as well, depending on the size of the shapes that you're cutting out. I mean, these tiny little hearts here are minute. It cut them out fine with the detail blade and the other blade, it could cut these out, no problem whatsoever. It is a very smooth, silky feeling card on both sides. This particular weight, however, as you can see, is very light which is what I would expect for 160. But it did still take blending techniques, which was what I wanted to test out in particular. So this was a mix of gouache and water, and I just used my standard brushes. I mean, let me zoom in a bit so you can see a bit better. Okay, I used my standard brushes for blending and it coped with that no problem whatsoever and i did this oh must be about a week ago and this morning i dropped some water on it and tried to lift the water off and it still worked so thumbs up for that this was a normal water-based ink uh, like these memento ones and that was done with a mixture of the ink with a drop of glycerine to help it spread as I would normally have done with those inks and it blended just fine and this was just a gouache paint with a tiny amount of glycerine added to it and it goes on really really well no problem there so I tried it with the watercolour brush pens. Now I did not expect it to take this particularly well, but it was okay. If you just wanted to add a tiny little touch of colour to something, you could get away with it. You wouldn't do much in the way of blending with it because this paper is not thick enough for you to want to get it wet. Normal alcohol markers, perfectly fine. I took some which were very very far apart in colour and it could still cope with that. Close in colour, no problem blending at all. So if you are looking for something which doesn't have to be very thick, maybe you just want to use it as a front panel, a background panel with colour on it, you could get away with this without any difficulty. 
and if you can get the thicker version because I think they do one which is either 200 or 250 GSM that would be yeah, pretty good as well so the tip there is look out on the Amazon warehouse and see if they have the stocks that you actually want to buy right my next tip is about glitter card now you can't actually draw on glitter card but what you can do is score it as you can see here you can score it and you can put patterns or writing in it by scoring it now I have another tip here and this is definitely aimed at those people who have cutting machines okay I have my dedicated scoring tool here now as it happens I'm lucky enough to have access to a 3d printer but this would be pretty easy to do even if you didn't. If you measure the diameter of whatever tool your machine is capable of taking, you can sometimes find some doweling, for example, with the correct diameter. And all I did was so I had some of these nail tools and I can get a packet of five of these for about three euros. Broke this out of the end and as it happened I mean I had designed this tube with the correct size hole in it but if you're using a piece of doweling all you'd need to do is mark the center and get a hole drilled in it add a little glue if you need to these when I've made these I haven't even had to glue them in because they've been such a tight fit and obviously when they're being used the pressure is driving it up now I didn't put the hole all the way through I just put the hole into about a centimeter and I've been using this for oh must be probably two years I guess <laughs> I won't be at all surprised and I've got them in different sizes so that I can have for example a slightly more blunt score line and I use it to do all my creasing for cards and things. I use it to do any embossing. Example, I've got this design here with a foil card on it. And I put this sentiment into my cutting machine. And I've got the line fill option on the bold, beautiful and you. And I simply put one of these in my machine and off it went. It did it all for me, which is great. But as I said, you know, for glitter card, if you want to put patterns in glitter card, because you can't really put patterns on glitter card without ruining your pens otherwise, then that is a nice alternative. My next tip is also for cutting machines. And you might be surprised to see it's a fan brush. Now, I had this for art purposes many years ago, but I don't really use it for that these days. And what I do is I use it if I'm doing some very fine, very small cuts. And maybe I have deliberately not made my mat too sticky because to be honest, if you've got this sort of thing, you've got to get it off your mat afterwards. It really is terribly difficult because all those little bits are going to be so hard to remove from your mat. So quite often I use a mat which isn't sticky. I will take my paper or my card to the surface as tightly as I can, but that does mean that all these little bits have a habit of popping out of the holes and attaching to the blade. So I keep an eye on it as I'm working. I pause the machine every now and again and just do that underneath the blade catching the blade because it's a nice stiff brush but it's got very flat profile it's excellent for that I can take any extra little bits that have gone onto my blade and just whisk them out of the way so that's a really really handy one to know about if you have a cutting machine my next one this is the sort of mat that I often use in my cutting machine because I can but obviously this is a placemat or a cutting mat for kitchen use, whatever. It is not sticky. So what I do is I use Eileen's tack it over and over, put some of that on and cover. Now, previously I have used something like this to spread the glue. 
But in actual fact, I found a better option is to roll it on. Now this is a spongy rubber roller I've had for a long time. I think it was actually designed for DIY, sort of when you put wallpaper on, rollering the edges of the wallpaper to get the bubbles out. Um, but it does a very good job of spreading the glue wherever you want it. And yeah, it's slightly easier than using one of these to do it. So that's how I do it. Now, if you find your glue is way too sticky, and believe me, this stuff will make your mats extremely sticky, you can dilute the glue down a little. And not only will it make it go further, but it won't be quite as sticky as it otherwise is. But otherwise, if you want a really sticky mat, this is definitely what you want to get. Now, as you can see, this has actually been painted. But what I did was I put my stencil on here and I used Arteza uh, vinyl to do my stencil because it sticks on really well and it can tolerate water being put all over it. I put my stencil on and then I etched it first. Then I rinsed it off, dried it off and then put my acrylic paint over the top. I just sponged it on. And the reason I suggest that you do that is because it makes it stick better. If you're looking at this surface, you can see it is smooth, it is shiny, glossy. This is not ideal to put paint on, not really and truly. If you want these things to go through the dishwasher, like I do, because believe me, I'm not hand washing my mugs every day, then it's a great idea to do a little keying and this sort of stuff, you can buy whatever brand you can get your hands on. It's all the same sort of stuff, it's an acid. This will key it nicely. It will take the glaze off where it touches. So you do need to mask it off. You could use stripes, you could do a stencil of whatever design you like, but you mask it off, you apply it. It only takes a couple of minutes. You then rinse it off, dry it, and then without removing your stencil, you go over your stencil with your paint. And then before that gets too hard, because you don't want acrylic paint to have a skin on it when you peel it off, you peel off your stencil and the design is done. On top of that, you can put it in a cold oven, put the temperature up to about 150 Celsius and wait till it gets to 150, switch the oven off and just allow it to cool in the oven. Once you've done that, it's not likely to come off. I have used this mug, I have put it through the dishwasher a lot. It's just as good as the day that I made it. So there we go. So that's it, five crafting hacks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please stay tuned to watch some more if you're interested in crafting. And I will see you again soon. Take care now.